So how can a Christian who has the Holy Spirit also have a demon? Yeah, so this is a major question that we can probably go along on. We won't take a lot of time on it. But I tell people all the time, a Christian could have whatever they want. Like they say, a Christian can't have a demon. And I'm like, uh, what else can they not have? Are they not allowed to have a donut? Are they not allowed to have a coffee? Like a Christian can no, have no. whatever they want. When you get saved, you don't all of a sudden get a license to live however you want and be protected. In fact, God never protects people in disobedience. So if you open a door, like if I open my front door right now, I don't get to say, if a fly flies in, you're not allowed to fly in here because the door is open. A fly can come in, a wasp can come in, a rat can come in. If you leave the door open, stuff can come in, whether you're a Christian or not. So a couple things we have to ask ourselves. Number one, is there any scripture that says a Christian can't have a demon? Because at the end of the day, my stories or my experiences don't matter. What matters is what does the scripture say? So is there a place in scripture where the Bible says you can't, a Christian can't have a demon? And the answer is no. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says a Christian can't have a demon. In fact, the Bible would point to and allude to the fact that deliverance is actually for Christians, actually for the believer. And then, and then let me also bring up another point. Deliverance would be pointless if Christians can't have demons. And the reason why I say that is, is if a Christian can't have a demon, all we need to do is get the person saved and automatically all the demons will leave making deliverance unnecessary. But the truth is in Acts chapter eight, Philip preached to them, he did miracles and he cast out demons. And it's like, Philip, why don't you just preach to them? Why are you even casting out demons? Just get them saved. But the, but the question, what, the answer is, yes, absolutely believers can come under the power of a demon. If you look at the Greek word for what we translate possessed, and this is a very well-known teaching by many people, uh, the, the word possessed was not in the Greek. So they translated the Greek word to the English word called possess, possess which means having ownership. But there's no Greek word for possessed. It just means to be under the power of a demon. So the oppression argument, the uh, oppression versus possession, mm -hmm. I don't get into none of that. Mm -hmm. I just say they're demonized. And absolutely, if you look at Mark 139, mm -hmm. Jesus went from synagogue to synagogue, casting of demons. Mm -hmm. If you look at Acts chapter eight, the disciples were mm -hmm. full of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter five, Ananias and Sapphira were filled with Satan. So in Acts four, they're full of the, the Holy Spirit. In Acts five, they're full of Satan. Yeah. And then the person might argue watching this saying, well, Ananias and Sapphira weren't Christian. And I'm gonna give you two clear ways we know they were Christian. Number one, what unbeliever do you know sold everything they have and gave half to the church? That's <laughs> Dude, number one. The, the, the believers don't even do that. That's number one. Okay, so, and then number two, this is the best argument for those that say Ananias and Sapphira weren't Christians. Number two is, when does God ever kill unbelievers in the New Testament? Never. So God doesn't kill unbelievers for lying to him because they, uh, half the city Absolutely. would be dead. <laughs> well, unbelievers lie to, Jesus, to God and the Holy Spirit every day and lie all the time. But yet God says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill these people because they lied to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So God's not out here killing unbelievers for lying. Obviously they were Christians. Matthew 12, Jesus says the demons come back seven times yeah. worse. So again, if this is for unbelievers, the demons yeah. would just come right back. And we can go on and on and on. And the church was, back then, the church was only for believers. They didn't try and evangelize lost people within the church. Yeah. It, it was out on the streets and they brought you into church when you were a believer. Yeah, absolutely. And I think from your experience, from my experience, I only do deliverance on believers. And I've done deliverance as you have on pastors, on leaders, on all these Christian people. These are not like people that are like talking themselves on the side of the road. These are mm -hmm. average, normal police officers, school teachers, people that work at Walmart, Starbucks, McDonald's, normal people that are coming for deliverance. And so absolutely, even if you look at Galatians, Paul said, who cast an evil spell on you? It's like, wait, Paul, you didn't get the memo? Christians right. can't have spells put on them. Christians mm -hmm. can't have demons. Mm -hmm. Yet at the same time we see uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 4. They had a different gospel, a different Jesus, and a different spirit. And then last mm -hmm. one, last verse I want to give for this is 2 Timothy 1, 17. Two Christians, he says, God has not given a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So you guys have fear. Yeah. You guys are timid. That spirit didn't come from God. So you're a Christian with the spirit of fear, and it didn't come from God. Mm -hmm. So you, so is, is fear not a spirit? It is. Yeah. It is a spirit, and Christians have it. So yes, absolutely, a Christian mm -hmm. could have a demon. Well, how could the Holy Spirit and a mm -hmm. demon live together, they don't. The Holy Spirit lives in your spirit, you become alive in Christ, and your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotion, Second Thessalonians talks about this, this is the place where demons live. The Bible also says nothing good lives in your flesh. So God does not live in the flesh. No. Uh, demons are able to also live in the flesh. So yeah, those are a couple ways. Yes, the Christians can have demons. No, yeah. a Christian can't be possessed. None of us teach that. None yeah. of us believe that. Christians cannot be owned by the devil, but they can be under the power of the devil. Yeah, and you kind of touched on this as well, is people love to put it put, be, be in like two categories. Like what's the difference between possessed and oppressed? Yeah. And then they have this whole teaching that, Christians can't be possessed, they can only be oppressed. And they ask me these questions, they say, look, um, what are the two categories? And I'm like, 
there's not two categories. There's thousands of categories. Yes. You can have one demon. You can have 10 demons. You can have a hundred. You can have That's a thousand. Good. So why are you trying to th uh, put it into two categories? It's like, it's like, and not only could you have a thousand, what are the types of demons that you have? Are they highly ranking ones or are they just mild ones? Like, you know, they're all different levels of evil. When he said seven can come back, he said seven more evil than each other, as in seven levels of evil, mm. as in anger, rage, murder, you know, all the levels of yeah. evil. So it's like, there's not two categories. Yeah. You know, it's too simple. It's over simple. One of the saddest things happening right now in the church is pastors telling their congregation a Christian can't have a demon. Because let me show you what happens when you do this. A person in the church has a demon. Because the pastor telling you you can't have a demon doesn't change the fact you have one. So you still have it. <laughs> you still have it. You come to your pastor. Think about this. You come to your pastor and you say, I have a demon. I'm, say, for example, spirit of suicide. I have thoughts of killing myself. And instead of the pastor saying, let's cast this out of you, the pastor says, well, maybe you're not a Christian. Like they put your salvation in question because their theology says a Christian can't have a demon. So if you have a demon, you must not be a Christian. So instead of pointing our finger at the demon and saying, come out of this person, we point our finger at the person and say, well, maybe you're just not saved. And that is so sad that the person's salvation comes under question instead of the unclean spirit. And that is the <laughs> epidemic. The That's the epidemic in the church is we have pastors their theology is keeping people in bondage. And I'll go even farther and say, people are dying, physically dying, because pastors aren't willing to proclaim there is freedom and deliverance for you. This is why Jesus came first, John. Jesus in yeah. Mark 1, cast out devils. Like you literally, and I've studied the Bible plenty, you can't even get through like two or three chapters of the gospels without Jesus casting out demons. And I've always said like Mark 1, says he went from synagogue to synagogue casting out mm -hmm. demons. And one day God told me, there's a thousand testimonies in that one verse. Like it literally says he went from synagogue to synagogue casting out demons. How many demons? How many people? There's a thousand testimonies in that one verse. And so if we're not careful, we might think, oh, this is a secondary ministry. This yeah. is a side ministry. This is not. This is mm. the ministry of Jesus to cast out devils, yep. to threaten Satan's kingdom. So every pastor watching, stop being soft. Stop being soft, get off the cruise ship, get on the battleship, stop being a jellyfish, get some backbone. John 10, don't be a hireling, don't be in this for money. Cast out demons, your people need this and they're longing for this. Again, I, I know I'm not supposed to be preaching here, but I get too fired up and excited. We <laughs> definitely need deliverance badly in the church. Yeah, and uh, people backslide if they don't have their demons cast out. Yep. If they've got spirits of addiction, it's like a hook and a fishing line and the devil's just pulling you straight back into yep. your old habits. So. If somebody backslides, and I mean really backslides, like they go back into drugs, they sleep around with multiple people, they're swearing and cussing and using God's name in vain, and then a year or two later they go, oh, I'm going to come back to church again. Are they going to need to be delivered again? I would say yes. In fact, I would say every single person watching this should go through deliverance. I'm like, why not? I was thinking of this today. If you line up nine random people, or let's say ten random people, in my opinion, from my experience, I could be wrong. This is my own opinion. This is not in the word of God. This is Isaiah's translation here, okay? I would say 10 people lined up, nine of them need deliverance. Yeah. Honestly, if you just w look at society where we're yeah. at, you just, and 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 pastors would say no, and the pastors that would say probably not are, are really out of touch with what people are going through. Yeah. Pastors say, well, I don't ever deal with demons. Well, because no one goes to you because they know you don't cast out devils. <laughs> They're not gonna, like, you're not gonna help. Yeah, I've never taken my car to the dentist to get an oil change because the <laughs> dentist doesn't change oil. So I'm only gonna take my car to the car shop. And a lot of pastors are like, well, people don't come to me for deliverance. I'm like, yeah, because you just spend all your days golfing. Like they come to you for golfing lessons, but not deliverance. So we desperately need people that would willingly say, I'm going to do deliverance. And if you backslid or you've gone back to the world, just get delivered. Just get free. Go for deliverance. Yeah. The absolute worst thing that can happen to you if you go for deliverance is you just don't have a demon. Like that's the worst. Yeah. The best thing that can happen is you get delivered. But at the end of the day, deliverance is just prayer. So like, should I go for prayer? Yeah. Absolutely. And if you did backslide, it's likely there's critters on board because oftentimes demons will wait for somebody to do something stupid, specifically a Christian that yeah. they hate. And the demons hate you way more when you've served God and you backslide. So they're just waiting to jump in. So yeah, repeat deliverances are, are a real thing for whatever reason. And I definitely, and you and me are both voices for deliverance. One thing I wanna say as a voice of deliverance is we have to stop shaming people for repeat deliverance. Like our critics say, oh, I saw that girl in a video getting delivered before, so? Who cares? Go for more deliverance. I tell people, go get more deliverance, get more freedom. I When I pray mass deliverance, 
I put my hands up and go, Lord, deliver me. Like, <laughs> if there's anything there. Dude, if there's anything there, search me. If there's any critters on board, I want them off of me. I'm not prideful yeah. and arrogant. And then, you know, the heresy hunters make videos. Isaiah Saldivar says he needs deliverance. Yes, all the time, Lord, deliver me. Jesus said the daily bread was deliver us from evil. That was the daily prayer. So one of Jesus' prayers was deliver us from evil daily. That was a daily prayer. So yes, we need deliverance. If somebody backslides, repeat deliverance is amazing. Maybe you got deliverance once, but not everything came out. Maybe you went back to the world. Maybe you only did a 20 minute deliverance. Uh, there's many reasons why you would need a repeat deliverance, but I'm I'm all for getting delivered. I'm never gonna say like, oh no, don't, don't do that, blah, blah, blah. How often would you recommend to go in for a session? I mean, I change my oil on my car every 3,000 miles, so it's no problem getting an oil change every few months. I would I would go through deliverance every couple months, every six months. It depends on how free you want to be. I mean, <laughs> if you're okay with, if you're, now listen, if you're not having any symptoms, right? There's no, no overwhelming desires, no perverted thoughts being created, no nightmares, no, and you're not having no symptoms, then hey, there's plenty of people we need to work on. Don't hit me up, right? Like, you don't need to keep coming and coming and coming, but, if there's symptoms and there's signs and there's things that are dragging you away, there's voices there, there's overwhelming desires, perverted thoughts, then go for a deliverance. But again, I don't wanna create people that are deliverance junkies, yeah. that are addicted to deliverance. Like we're not addicted to deliverance, we're addicted to the one that does the deliverances. And the more we go next to him, the more he reveals the impurities and the more we get free. So I would recommend every few months. And here's the thing, once you learn how to do deliverance, once your husband or wife knows, your wife could deliver you. You don't need Isaiah Saldivar. You don't need pa Apostle Pagani. You don't need Mike <clears throat> Signorelli. Your wife could deliver you. So don't be afraid to deliver your kids. Like if you're out here in the chat and you watch these videos, you get trained, you should be able to do deliverance on your kid. It's like, it's not that bad. It's not that hard. So I would recommend, man, make sure that your wife, your spouse, your kids, train them up, train them up. So in case you need deliverance in the middle of the night, you don't have to go on the deliverance map. You can get delivered right there.